I got the rods loaded up, tackle loaded up, going to pick up Ethan right now. Hey, Ethan. What's up, fellas? All right, it is 5.36. Just picked up Ethan. Should be at the lake by 6 o'clock. I think it stopped raining, so that's good. Let's go. Yeah, can I get two sausage burritos? How many burritos? Just one or two? Two. For you. Yep, thank you. Thank you. Just picked up some McDanks. Yeah. We are uh, about 15, 20 from the lake. It is 5.51. What are you gonna start off throwing? A popper. A popper? Yep. All right. It is 6.07 a.m. Made it to the lake. Need to hurry up, because the clouds look like they might be going away soon, but it's perfect top water time. You want your tackle boxes? That might help. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, I'm starting off with the, uh, I don't know, Rapala x rap prop bait. It's like a devil horse style deal, so let's see how this goes. Piece of plastic that I bit off and put on a little hook. I was just dropping them out of the water into the cooler, out of the water into the cooler. That's a good one too. He did not. I did not think he was very big when I first set the hook. Oh yeah, that's a that's a chunker. Woo! There we go. First fish, probably about three pounds. I'm gonna toss her on the scale. Got that on the white weightless fluke. On the real sonar scale, we got three, four, two, so almost three and a half. There you go. Oh, we got a double. Most up. There you go. Ethan just got one on a popper. Doubled up. Gonna get a release on the three and a half pounder. I gotta go get my camera from the dock, see if we can get some more. Getting off the boat, I left my big camera on my truck. Hopefully it's not gone. Thank God. Okay, back to fishing. That's a good one. Woo! Hey girl! How you do? How you do? <laughs> Woo! Not quite as big as that first one. Gonna go for the release. Probably about two and two, two and a half pounder. Good fish. Let's see if it's any good. So for those of you who are new to the channel, this is a pretty memorable spot where I think two or three years ago, Ethan and I were on this exact boat throwing the exact same lure and uh, we caught some four and five pound bass and we freaked out thinking they were six pounders. But if you don't know what I'm talking about, oh, what did you just catch? I was just talking about, I was just talking about f f freaking four and five pounders and he catches a nine, nine incher. Anyways, we freaked out and it's a pretty funny video. We called Fluke Master out. This is like when I had like 2,000 subscribers. So I'll put the link down in the description. It's pretty cool. You can watch us catch some big fish right here. There's one. Holy crap. Oh gosh, you gotta get the net on this one, dude. Oh. Got him? Big one? Oh, it's a good one. You can just cut another one on the iconic Fluke wall. That's a chunky fish. So after I caught two fluke fish, he put it on. Now he's got two in the boat. No pigs yet, but uh, sun's coming out. Might, might push them under docks. Start skipping them up there a little bit. Good fish. Hells yeah. Oh, 
dude, he... <laughs> no, but he had me like 10 feet away from where I casted. That's a good one. Another fluke fish. Oh my gosh. It might be a big one. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Two and a half, three pounder. Oh. That is, dude. Ooh, that thing. That thing weighs. That thing weighs. I might get a three and a quarter, maybe. Yep. Three and a half. Real sonar scale says three five five. Three and a half pounder. Another good fluke fish. Going back in the water. Oh, we had them figured out pretty good. I did too. Maybe this is like two main lake. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Get him. Get him. Oh, big Bertha. Yeah. Not bad. Get him. Ethan's hooked up with a nice one on a, another fluke. Two pounder, two and a half pounder. There you go. Good stuff. Unfortunately, this battery on this boat does not last very long. It's only about 9:13 right now. We have to kind of, we have to head back right now. We may fish a little bit inside uh, on the bank on the coves. Just cast around a few times, see if we can pull a few fish off with flukes again. But overall, I mean, we had fun. We caught some fish, and we're gonna do a recap. Ethan and I are gonna sit down, and I really think you guys will learn something from this uh, because it's a. Uh, it's something happened today that usually doesn't happen and it's dead calm and for those of you especially who fish ponds can probably use some of the information that we're going to give you at the end of this video so make sure to stay tuned for that uh but yeah we're going to go try to catch a couple fish from the bank and so we made it back to the bank i'm going to toss this fluke around some of these docks here See if I can pull out one or two more fish before calling it a day. 20 minutes later. All right, well, no luck fishing from the bank. All righty here. Let me make sure I'm recording. Oh yeah, we're good. It's uh, 10.01 and we're ending the day here. Unfortunately, the trolling motor battery did not last very long. We're probably gonna go pick up a second one, hopefully, so we can uh, fish a little bit longer, but it was a perfect day for what we were doing and what you guys saw was we caught them on flukes, which if you don't know what a fluke is, a fluke is that bait right there. Uh, Zoom makes this particular one, but there's a ton of different brands out there that make them. They're essentially all the same thing. This one is in white ice color, and uh, we threw it completely weightless. We used just a, just a hook, no weight on it. You could, you could of course, put weights on it. Uh, we decided not to today, so I'm gonna go over the lure, the rod, the reel, the line. I'm also gonna go over why we picked this lure and why it worked. And then Ethan is gonna go over the location that we were throwing the lure and why we think that we caught them where we did. So I said zoom super fluke with a five aught heavy gauge wire uh, round bend hook, which seems absurd for fluke fishing. But the thing with fluke fishing is it's very technical with the way it floats. And so I used a heavy gauge wire because then it's a heavier hook, which means it has a faster fall rate, which sometimes can get a better reaction bite. And uh, I don't like using EWGs, but you could definitely use an EWG. I just like, I'm just more of a, I have more confidence in a round bend. The line I was using was 15 pound Seaguar Smackdown braid. And you can see it is straight braid. I did not use any uh, fluorocarbon leaders. And then for the rod, I had a spinning setup. And this is my ideal fluke rod. So if you wanna dedicate one fishing pole to fluke fishing, you need to get this one. It's a Castaway Tyrannus. It is a medium heavy seven foot. So the reason why you want a medium heavy, there's a couple reasons. One is because we, where we are fishing today, we're around docks. So when you skip this fluke up under docks, sometimes they wrap you up, especially if it's a big fish. And so you wanna make sure you got a lot of power to winch them out, which is why I was using straight braid. Another reason why I'm using spinning gear is because it's easier to skip. Although I can skip baits with bait casters, it's much easier with spinning gear. And the reel I was using was just a regular 3000 series reel. Reels don't really matter for me. Um, I haven't really found anything that I absolutely love. So just use whatever works for you. So the reason why we picked a fluke was because when we got here, we were essentially gonna do topwater fishing and we just really could not get anything to fire on the topwater. And so when they weren't running topwater, we decided to go with a fluke. 
Reason why we did that is because when it's calm, you don't want something noisy. You don't want your square bills, you don't want your chatterbaits, you don't want your spinner baits. You want something nice and subtle like this. And the reason why I don't go, didn't go with the weightless Sanko like I normally would is because there's a lot of shad flickering around in this lake. There's a lot of shad in general, not a whole lot of bluegill. So that's why we went with this bait. So if you guys are ever fishing where it's dead calm, slick calm, and whether it's sunny or cloudy, you want to throw uh, not loud baits. You want to throw swim jigs, you want to throw just anything weightless, Texas rig, that type of stuff. And if it is cloudy, then you want to fish shallow. So now Ethan's going to go over why we think we caught the fish where we did, and uh, maybe you can learn something if you ever fish a lake like this. So basically what we did today, like Flair said, we were throwing a fluke up shallow. We are targeting mainly docks and sea walls. Corners of docks and sea walls is where we found most of the fish. They were ambushing shad up against the sea walls and the docks. And then we found that most of our fish were on the outsides of docks, not in or under them. Like he said, it is overcast, so they're not really hunkered up under stuff, trying to get out of the sun. They're out roaming around, shallow, targeting bait fish. So next time you're on the water, just keep in mind, cloudy, overcast, look shallow. Okay, so that's about it. Hopefully you guys learned something. I do have a PO box open address is below. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, Facebook, Tinder. So that's basically if you guys enjoy the fishing videos. I know they're hopefully they're not getting really repetitive. I try not to do the exact same thing when I go to lakes. Like today, I probably could have thrown a jig and caught some fish, but but that's what I did last time. So I, I intentionally used a fluke, something that I haven't used. So if you guys want me to use a specific lure that I haven't yet, or you want to know how to use it, you let me know in the comment section. But please leave a like if you like the fishing videos. I will continue to fish. I plan on fishing four or five times this weekend and uh, cranking out some more videos for you guys. That's it for today's episode, guys. Thanks for watching. See him. Get him. No, get him. Yes. 